Hey everybody, this video is about why we have rocky planets and gas planets. Why do we have so many different kinds of planets in our solar system? We talked about last time how planets formed and they kind of talked about how they all formed about the same way from this disk around the protostar. So why do they look so different? Different sizes, shapes, all these kind of things. That's our topic for today. So let's get started. Um, we're going to go back to that disk. And there's something really important about the disk. This is still section 14.3, by the way. And that is that the disk isn't exactly the same everywhere. So we call this disk the protoplanetary disk. Now we know that it's going to make planets. Um, it's the protoplanetary disk. Right, we've gotten that far in the process. And we kind of break it down into two parts, the inner disk and the outer disk. Right, so we have the inner part, and sorry, my pen keeps doing funky things here, the inner disk and the outer disk. Why do we do that? Why do we break it down into two parts? Well, it turns out that they're different because of their composition. The types of materials, gases, and other elements that are available are different in the inner disk and the outer disk. Okay, so the compositions are different. Why are the compositions different? Well, it actually all comes down to temperature. Temperature and distance. If you are farther away from a heat source, you're colder, right? Um, if you're closer to a heat source, like the inner disk, you're hotter. So the inner disk is hotter than the outer disk because it's closer to the protostar, right? It's actually being heated by the protostar. And then later when that star turns on, when it starts doing fusion, by the star itself. But even the protostar, remember, is hot. It's not doing fusion, it's not a star yet, but it's got that infrared um, heat that came from the gravitational energy being converted to thermal energy. I'm gonna write that down again, right? Because that is all the heat um, that we are getting in the inner disk. You're heated by the protostar and you're heated by that conversion, even in the disk itself, um, the conversion of gravitational energy to thermal energy, to heat. So we've seen this conversion of gravitational to thermal energy in the protostar. We had a clicker question about it happening in the disk. And here I'm just reminding you again. So in this inner part of the disk, it's hotter. Okay. And that's going to affect the composition of that disk as well. So what is the comp composition of the inner disk? Well, the inner disk has what we call refractory materials. So the inner disk has only refractory materials. What's a refractory material? Well, it's something that doesn't melt, evaporate, disappear, more or less, change phase um, at high temperatures. So refractory um, materials do not melt when they get hot, okay, at high temperatures. And we have high temperatures in the inner disk, um, so these are the things that stick around. What are some examples? Not anything that you haven't encountered before. They're metals and rocks, iron, um, silicates. Silicates are what make up most of the earth. Uh, think about sand. Those are silicates. Um, carbon. We're made of a lot of carbon, as are a lot of living things. Right? You can also think about, you know, your graphite pencil. So all of those kind of things, in general, metals 
and rocky materials. I mentioned just some of those specifics, iron, carbon, silicates, because they're things that we're going to sort of come back to talk about um, from time to time. So in the inner disk, the inner part of the disk, the protostar is here. Um, in the inner part of the disk, you just get these gray refractory materials. So that's it, because it's hot. Right? What happens when you get to colder regions, though? In the outer disk, you're farther away from that protostar, you have less heating going on, and so the outer disk is colder. Okay. Because you're far away from the star, from the protostar, even at the star after it turns on. Okay, protostar. What does the outer disk have? Well, it turns out you get the refractory materials, but you also get other stuff that likes to stick around when it's cold. So the outer disk contains um, both refractory materials. Those don't go away. They're still there. And the second type that we're going to talk about today, volatiles. Uh, volatile materials. Volatile materials are volatile because they do what refractory don't. They melt, they evaporate um, when you get to sort of medium to hot temperatures. Okay, so a volatile is something that melts or evaporates, right? It's changing its phase. So essentially it's not a solid anymore to make up um, a solid planet, okay? melts or evaporates, I left out the A and evaporates, um, at sort of medium, moderate temperatures. So we also know what these materials are, and unfortunately I didn't leave myself um, any space, <laughs> so I'm going to erase here just a minute. Uh, we know what volatiles are. Uh, volatiles are things that we encounter every day. Water, for example, um, but also other things that make up the planets. Okay, there we go. Let me switch to my pen. So what are volatiles? So this is carrying on here. They are things like ices of water. So you have solid water. It melts or evaporates at pretty low temperatures, right? And methane, which we normally think of here on Earth as a gas because it's not solid until you get to really cold temperatures, um, and other things that we consider gases. Um, on Earth, and that are actually gases on the other planets as well, like gases like hydrogen and helium. And hydrogen and helium are mostly what that disk was made of in the first place. The interstellar medium, the molecular cloud, the protostar, the disk, they are all mostly hydrogen with some helium mixed in. But it turns out that that hydrogen, that gas, can only kind of live out in the outer part of the disk, where it's colder. And we'll talk about this more um, as we talk about planet atmospheres a little bit later. Uh, but for now, just kind of think, okay, it has to be cold for me to get things like hydrogen and helium. So, um, we have these different planets, and they were formed at different places in this disk. So let's just pause for a minute and think about, we've got to the stage of a planet. We talked about how planets were built, built from dust bunnies with static electricity, and then gravity comes in, and you get bigger and bigger things until you get planetesimals, and those combine to get planets. But we never defined a planet, so here it is, a planet orbits a star and it has a mass that's less than a brown dwarf, okay, less than 
13 times Jupiter. Okay, less than 13 Jupiter masses. Okay, now Jupiter is our biggest planet. So all of our planets in our solar system are less than the size of Jupiter. But we have seen planets elsewhere around other stars that are bigger. So this is how we define what a planet is. Remember we said that there are some leftover planetesimals, asteroids, dwarf planets. We'll talk about those later. Those are not planets. Okay. So we have this definition of a planet, but let's relate that to what we're talking about with a disk. Planets also have different compositions. We live on a rocky planet, but there are gas giants too, right? The composition of the dust and gas in the disk, okay, dust and gas in the disk, where that planet formed, okay, determines the planet's composition. Okay, composition of dust and gas in the disk determines planet composition. That's why we're talking about what's in the disk, because it makes a difference to what's in the planet. So we talked about how the inner disk has these refractory materials. Well, it turns out the inner planets also are made of rocky refractory materials. So the inner planets are rocky. Um, they are made of refractory materials. We look around Earth and we see metals and we see silicates. Uh, we don't see hydrogen. Um, we see methane gas, but we don't see liquid or solid methane like we see further out in the solar system. So the inner planets um, and those just for your reference, we're going to talk more about them the rest of the semester. The inner planets um, are Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. These sometimes go by a different name called the terrestrial planets. We'll talk more of those later. And I'm going to squeeze it in here. The outer planets are gas planets, right? They're made of gas and ice. The outer planets keep the volatiles. Just like the outer disk had volatiles, the outer planets have volatiles, so they are made of things like gas and ice. And we'll talk more about individual planets later. But they are, let me squeeze it in here, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Uranus, Neptune. Okay. So different planets with different compositions um, and the reason is the disk was originally had these different compositions. Why? Different temperatures. One sort of little oddball thing that I'm just going to throw in here is that we are learning that planets can move after they formed and so that means we get weird things happening. Planets can move to different orbits, different distances from their star um, because they bump into other planets or they get close to other planets. Because of close encounters with other planets. So they form out there, maybe far away from their star, where you can have a lot of volatiles, but then they sort of gravity kind of bumps them into a different place, and all of a sudden they're much closer than they used to be. Oopsie, sorry, we'll get to that in just a second. Um, so what happens, and we don't see this in our solar system, but now that we have discovered other planets around other stars, we see planets um, whose composition doesn't match their orbits. So in other words, the composition of the planet tells us where the 
planet originally formed. Where the planet originally formed, even if that planet is now much closer, for example, um, than it was before. So composition tells us where the planet originally formed, um, even if the planet has moved. Okay, even if it has moved at some point. So the prime example here, we'll have a clicker question about this, is a hot Jupiter. So here's a picture. This is a gas giant right here, but it's super close to its star. And we have seen these around other stars where we have a huge gas giant just like Jupiter, but it's closer than Mercury is to the sun. How did it get there? It's too hot for it to keep that hydrogen. So it must have formed somewhere farther away and moved in. Um, kind of an interesting, weird thing that I just wanted to bring up here. All right, so end of the video, but I want to give you some clicker questions. You will find these on Moodle. Okay, here's the one about hot Jupiters. You're also gonna be doing a lecture tutorial. That's from that. Um, here are a couple more clicker questions. You may wanna do these after you do the lecture tutorial, um, just so you have a better understanding of everything. Okay, so thank you all. I will... See you next time.